Hi there, thank you for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you my brand new handmade book. And I created this based on an online course by Benice Love. So I will tell you more about that. This video will also be a trip down memory lane because we have here an old cookie jar. It's over 100 years old. It's from Anthony's great grandmother. We also go back to my first mini books that I created and I created them in my childhood. So I hope you enjoyed this video. First, I want to show you these tiny books that I found in the attic and I created these ones when I was around eight years old. So as a kid, I already created books with little stories in it. And this one is about ladybugs. And you see that I, uh, I drew the ladybugs as if they were people. So they were standing straight up and these were their clothes, little trousers and little skirts. So these were the male ones and these were the female ones. And I also drew, drew mountains like this with little caves in it. And that was the place where they lived. I don't know who these two are. I think this is my brother and this is me. So this is a very simple way to create a book. Just cre prepare some paper in the same size or approximately the same size. You see, I wasn't very good with the scissors. Here, you look at this. Maybe I torn this one. And uh, so I just needed some pieces of paper. I think these are, these are eight pieces of paper. And then I simply binded it with tape. I was really eating tape when I was a kid. When I was visiting my aunt, uh, Kitty, for example, I always came there, I think, each week we were there and she was um, babysitting. And then I asked her, do you have tape? And then she came with rolls of tapes and I was satisfied and I was creative all afternoon. And so I was addicted to create books, with creating books and Here's a stamp with my name. That's really funny. And um, my, my handwriting wasn't that neat, but that doesn't matter. I created some space where I could write and some place, some space to create my images. And I think these are, it's nice whether we get to the caves. It's a boy and a girl. There are no names. We go to the beach. I think there aren't any ladybugs in the story. Oh, there's swimming clothes. Very nice. So, um, a little baby there. Yeah, I don't know how this suddenly came out of the blue. Kind of a plot twist. Oh, they are called Peter and Lisha. So, Peter and Liza, or Lisa. Well, that's a story. Um, it's very nice. I think it was seven or eight colored houses. Uh, so this is one of my first books and I always spend a lot of time to do the cover. And well, this is kind of carton. It's thick paper. I didn't use any paint because I just had, I, I had no paint. Color pencils. So this is um, next level book, book binding. Uh, what I decided was I thought the books would yellow or get older. And I was thinking about this, this one needs to be good when, well, when I'm 50 years old or 100 years old, I still have to, um, I want to read it still. So I was thinking ahead and I was covering hold the cover of the book with tape. And you see, it's not lasting because the tape falls off and it's even more yellow than this one. So this one, yeah, I wanted to take care for it. So in a good way, but it failed. Uh, this is about two rabbits or hares. I think it's hares. 
and it's about three kids this time and they are going to uh, a show and it's a rabbit in its underpants it's very nice it's kind of a puppet show and we were also playing this my brother and i we were just playing these same shows and and for each other and then we decided i decided to create a book around this mm. you see it's all thinner paper but it's colored i think this is a, a later book but my handwriting isn't that good mm, but my, my my handwriting wasn't good until i was 11 or something in primary school they forced us to write the with the letters attached and a bit uh, cursive but i wanted to write like people did in books so i wanted to write with loose letters and other letters than we had uh, than we were uh, taught on school so I wanted to look to to have it to give it a look of a real book so these were my first books with stories in it and I have many of those so but I think this is enough to give you an idea in my previous art journal I created a lot of mini books I think three or four uh, so let's dive in So on this page, I created, I think this is my first mini book in years. And I just used some leftover materials. And this was at a time when I had, well, we were just back from France, long summer, four and a half months, we were away from home. And when I came back, I wanted to see all my friends and I just gathered some moments that were really precious to me um lovely moments i had with these friends um doing meditation and singing workshop um i think this is uh i went to amsterdam with a friend of mine um this was the word from the meditation what do you want to take home uh, so connection and brightness and these are things from, I think, from uh, a piece of a pie or something that was underneath the pie. This was the calendar from my parents' home. And here you can see how I binded the book and I glued it into my art journal. You could also choose to bind directly on the page. So then you see here the binding of the book. But I think even I can check that out when I am on the last, very last page. Yeah, I, uh, I cut a hole here with, uh, and then the, the, the final page, so the back of this one, is going to the other page to give it a little strength and also to integrate this book into this larger art journal but what i've done this book is quite thick because the front at least the front and the, and the back of the book are very thick cards and paper uh, i put it flat when i close the book i close it like this and i don't close it like this then because there will be well this, this book will be very thick and i'm afraid that it will be broken or well this is better for the book yeah, so it's a lovely book with memories. I even, I, I like to see it now. It's more than a year later and I haven't looked at it for quite a while. And we go to the next one. And that one I created exactly a year ago. And that's the book of success. I just wanted to um, put in a book all the successful things of 2023 and well for example the new students who visit my lessons every week we are having a lot of subscribers on youtube and here you see i used um, zero waste materials with a round shape in it 
I love that very much. Um, I just took out random things I found uh, and for this one I used another round shape so you could have a little cut out window and you can see pieces of other papers and you see my pages aren't equal in size so everything uh, that's when you get on a very small page very little page I have little pages here but you can even see it here this is a half page and you can already see the following pages and the previous pages as well and I really love that you see my color palette is very dimmed and I just keep myself to blue kind of pink color and the rest is all neutral colors like browns and ochres and the color of the paper itself and that's already enough if you like the video please give it a thumbs up like subscribe and turn on a notification bell so you won't miss new videos this is even a student's result from one of the workshops i gave um, We opened an Etsy shop, but unfortunately closed it again because I get a lot of spam from it uh, and fake um, fake sales. So I just removed that one. But here you can see, well, the end of the book. We have we will be hosting a retreat in France. So this is another tiny book, and now we go to another page. And on this page you can actually see two mini books. One is the oven in which we bake our bread. And we do that twice or three times a week. These are all the things we need. And these are all our first breads that, well, were kind of failures. But now Anthony is the one who bakes the best bread ever. So... This was the start, just the start of the process, and it was December 2023. So almost a year later, uh, I can say he's a master and he's baking the bread perfectly. This is a little mini book uh, with very thin pages. I was already, well, noticing that this book was getting very thick and I wanted to close the book, so I just created some pages on forehand with a template of cat shape and I used the thinnest paper I could find like thin packaging paper um, I think this is just A4 paper book pages book pages I think this is an envelope or also packaging paper I don't know what it is all, but this book was all about, this book is uh, built around a theme, like this one is about baking bread, the other one uh, about my success, and the first one I showed you is with doing nice things with friends. This one is about Pearl, uh, well, we had to get her used to our mobile home because we couldn't find anyone to house it and take care of her. So we just let her live or took her sometimes with us in, the, in our mobile home. So she got used to it when it felt like a living room and she didn't even know that it could drive. So that was very funny thing to show all the things. The first test, uh, test drive, um, well, just chilling in the sunshine, looking at the bare winter trees. Um, so, and finally we decided, okay, we can go because Pearl is ready to go. This mini book is also about our cat Pearl. And I decided it was kind of an independent book. So I had my own travel journal about Spain and our adventures, but these were Pearl's adventures. And I decided to put this book separately in the jeans pocket on the back of the book. 
because I thought this was an independent project. So I will go through it fast because uh, I have this one already in a video with all pearls adventures and I use leftover materials like uh, I think this is a bag a packaging food packaging bags old notebooks sketchbook music sheets I think this is a wallpaper uh, well kind of wallpaper thing and here you can see the binding uh, I haven't told you about the binding from these projects these ones I glued down one by one so I started with the one in the back on the back and then I simply uh, glued it down so there was no sewing and for this one I also have to be careful that because it's thin I don't want to hurt the pose of pearl and her ears so I have to keep this thing flat and um, so that's that's a bit of a challenge I don't want to do cat voodoo with it so I have to do something to keep this flat every time that I close the book and this one is just glued down um, on the back of this one so that's on one point it's glued down and this one is glued down on the other page uh, so this is the oven so this has no needs no uh, sewing techniques and for this one I decided to give it a little thread to keep it uh, to keep it a book to make it a book and then you can see the rest of the adventures I just browse through it uh, I put a link up here so you can watch this video too and I put all the links in the description as well because I am uh, discussing all these books in previous videos too so Spain adventures and I put it again in the jeans pocket and here's also a little cat oh it's gone I don't know where it is there was a cat on this one too after the cat project I created a little book about the plants in our garden and I decided this place space to put it there but thought later on maybe this is an independent project as well the book was was well getting so thick and the more books you put in it the thicker it gets so I don't know yet if this one is going to be in the art journal or is going to be an independent project with this one I selected different kinds of papers and it was a book about my garden and you see a new color intrudes my work and that's the well purple lilac pink color and in this book I did some more with colors and it's binded not in a very complicated way but it's binded you see here is the rest of the thread and here you can see it's binded as well you see that uh, I love the middle page with something that is on two pages because when I want to if I if I would put another page here then you see it's breaking the thing in the middle I also have that with the cat book so you can see here that these are all different uh, elements in the book and it's not on two pages but this one is the middle part and it's one image on two pages at the same time so I really love that and you see I've been using other colors more dried elements more papers and patterns so it's really it was a really nice project and it was also for me an exercise to introduce myself to a new color 
and of course looking closely at the plants in my garden. And just like the cat book, I haven't put it in the art journal because maybe this could be an independent project. Although I have space for it and uh, I created this uh, place to put the book and also the, the color of this is coming back on this page and the plans are coming back on the page and even the packaging paper is coming back here. But I wanted to have it out to show to other people when we're traveling. I take this book with me to show other people. This is a mini book, how I make it. This is also about plants. So I think I definitely have to put this book in this art journal. Although it's already finished, I think I'm going to be doing that. These are my latest two art journals that I created both on uh, trip this summer and for these ones I am not sure if I'm going to put them in an art journal either just like the cat project I thought these ones could be independent art projects as well it's very simply binded so I can put more pages to it and for this one is not even uh, binded at all so I still have to do it or not, but this is a good way to show you how I laid down all the pages and I will show that to you how I most, uh, how I often start creating a mini book. So this one is one I created for my portrait book and it was kind of a challenge because we were traveling a lot and I knew that. And I knew that I'm not that productive when we're traveling a lot. I just have to take a lot of paint with me. And well, I just needed a small project to keep myself going. So it's a very good idea to make mini books when you know that you're, for example, busy or you're traveling. And then you can prepare all these pages. And then, uh, well, what I do is... This one is very simply binded, so I can um, remove the binding because in this book you could add pages. I just have a thread in the middle, or two threads actually, and then you can have all the pages how I created them. So. This is the way I start normally with creating a mini book. So So then I uh, I I prepare some pages. I select some papers that I want to have. Oh, these are two. I don't know which came first. I think this one came first. I just select some papers. I make sure in this case I wanted to do portraits. So I wanted to make sure that there would be enough space to put a portrait. And here is the final page or the middle page actually. This was in the middle. And then I just start with gluing down some small elements. That's maybe a piece of lined paper maybe a piece of written text or maybe it's something put on on a darker surface or on fabric like here so on fabric it's not possible to draw any portrait especially when you don't have paint with you it's good to have something what what's covering and you see also here i have a very limited color palette. I only have blue, uh, brown and in some things I added some extra colors like the red from the Japanese woman and here I have some yellow. But that's later on and in, in the first place I just decide to go for one or two colors and I only need that Durham pencil for that project. I will turn them around so you can see the back. So you must remember that I started this book 
while having no portraits on it at all. Um, so there was just backgrounds and then I selected, well, I, I won't be doing anything with the order right now because then I don't know how the book was originally. So this was my first batch and I thought this is a nice one. I just select some things that look good together, go well together color wise. And then I just go for selecting pages, bringing them together. Let some colors come back. And also here you can see that the pages don't have the same size. And I really don't mind. I really love that aspect. And then you can extend the book, well, as big as you want or as small as you want. Maybe I can make two books out of this too. And I simply put this loop this looped, uh, well, ropes, it's a rope and I think it's um, embroidery kind of uh, thread. So it's really nice. And yeah, so that's my book. And for this one, I even decided not to bind at all. I don't know why, I think because of the art journal isn't ready yet. So my ref, my little ref about the week, the retreat week, you can lay all the pages like this again. And then you can see how I build up the book. And sometimes I change a little in the order. So I really like working on a book and giving it uh, well, spots of paint, spots of well, some uh, papers I want to put on it like here and I think the music sheets are also on the page and here you can see this is wallpaper but it's very hard to work on so I just put some pieces of paper upon it here I even use uh, already patterns uh, designed pre-designed pre pre patterns Sometimes I just work with sketches that I created uh, while doing the retreat. This is from an old magazine. I also used dried honesty. I think, uh, furthermore, I haven't used dried flowers and things yet, but I used small pieces of patterns. So the mini books are a very good reason to to store your mini patterns and keep them for this purpose because it's really lovely to integrate those in your mini books and also here i used the same color palette maybe you find it a little boring but for me this is just the uh, color palette where i feel comfortable with now at this particular moment so maybe in my next book, I will give myself a goal to go for other colors. But you see, the books are looking differently and it's very nice to, to have them this way. And in this one, I challenged myself. I really wanted to have this one in. And I wanted to, well, to, to, to leave it out like this so you can see the word Rev, which is the name from the retreat uh, place so the pages aren't equal but they aren't even equally binded so things are sticking out of the book and i really love that maybe not in every case but in this case case i really love it so let's talk about my final latest mini book and that's this one as soon as I decided to create my own mini books, I was in search of mini book collage materi material. I was looking for fabrics and then I saw a friend of mine, Nina, has a furniture upholstery and she had many leftover fabrics. So these, this is one of the fabrics she gave to me and this was the inspiration for this project.
Our latest project is a book based on the course by Denise Love. And she created this course because this book, Dino Wakely book, isn't available and in production anymore. Now, the good news is I heard from Denise that this book will be having one more production and I think it's the smallest, the smaller one. So the size of this Spain travel journal, that one will be available. I don't know when and I also don't know where, in which country you can order this book. But we thought it was over. There was no production anymore. It discontinued. So I was thinking about using other books and did some investigations on that. And she was creating an online class and I followed her class, artisan uh, bookmaking and it's really wonderful to do and uh, really helpful if you want to do something with bookmaking and bookbinding and she shows several ways to do it and this book is actually a little mixture of creating such a Dino Wakely book and creating in my own style because I always start the other way around and my next goal will be to have a blank book with nothing in it and you can start with it and every page is just like just empty but I want to paint on pages to fuel the inspiration so I started this book based on her course but did it very differently and that's also because I this was my inspiration. So this was my guideline. This piece of fabric, if I stretch the book out, it looks like this. It was 15 by 30 centimeters. And I was thinking like, oh, that's the shorter, or the longest side of an A4 sheet. So it would be wonderful if I have paper, for example, this green paper, I can use it and just have to cut out, cut off a little part of the book so it was very easy for me to cut this book this one was my best friend making this book i just selected some kind of papers that i wanted to have in and that's the best thing of making your own journal that you can decide what paper you like best and some i just put some a5 six size cards in it um, I just had uh, some leftover things that I had in my studio craft paper I had that in a4 size as well and in this section I use a burlap and this is a grayish carton like thing that I used in my studio that week and this was actually something that I already glued down on the cover so you can see it when I open the book this way this is the other side of this piece of an old book from 1902 or something and I wanted to have it in and and it says Chateau de Dubois Dormain so it's the castle of the sleeping forest and I wanted to keep it very calmly, but here it's, it is the other side. So what I actually had to do when you bind a book, normally it goes like the first page uh, is glued down on this. The fabric is around this and then you glue down this first page so you won't see any of this gray boring carton. But I already done something on the boring gray carton, so it wasn't boring at all. And you can also see that on the back that I already created a lovely pattern. Well, and that's with people like me not thinking on forehand what's the plan or I'm just doing something and then I stumble upon things and challenges that I need to be doing differently next time. But for now, my goal was creating a book with two sections 
So you can clearly see that these are two sections. So in the middle it looks like this. Binding them together and having, for the first time in my life, pages that are equal. And that's totally new for me. And on the outside it doesn't look like the pages are equal at all because all the threads are well fraying already and the burlap is fraying and in the second section I have another piece of fabric that is fraying for oh <laughs> I think when when uh, when someone will work in it it's fraying and when you once you, you finish the book, it's all gone, maybe. It looks like there are moths in the book or something. But I really love that. But for the next book, my goal is to do the cover in a better way so it won't fray anymore. So if you fold the cover um, on the inside and then glue this one down, then you have a good cover. But I was already very satisfied. Oh, that was another dumb thing that I've done. Um, <laughs> okay, you learn from your mistakes. It's no mistakes, like Bob Ross says. There are no mistakes. There are only happy accidents. So I am even more happy making this book. Um, I was binding these two together and then I had to um, glue it or, well, sew it. I had to sew it on the cover. But I already glued this one to, to this part of the book, the boring grey cotton. So what I had to do, because otherwise the stitching was here and I didn't want that. So I, I removed this again, I cut it loose and then I did the stitching. So this is also binded on the front of the book. Then. I glue this down again and you won't see anything of it. So this is my tiny little book. And what is going to happen with this book is even more exciting. I wanted to share my result with Denise Love. But we were also planning to do a collaboration. So she has a little art journal for me to work in and she sends that to me. And this one is going to the United States. And she will work in this book, the book that I've created during her bookbinding course. So I'm very curious what it will look like in about a couple of months. Let's not be hasty, we'll just take our time. I will show you through the whole book so you have an impression what it looks like. It isn't a finished book because Denise has to finish this one. Or maybe she just continues and I finish it. I don't know yet, but it's really nice to do a book swap sometimes. And Denise Love is a mixed media artist. She does art journaling. She does watercolor. She's also a photographer. I put her website down in the links uh, so you can see her online class. She has it also on Skillshare. So if you are already on Skillshare, you can just join one of her classes and she has a lovely YouTube channel and that's how I know her and well I am very curious Denise what you would do with this book and you see that I created the color palette based a little on the front of the book like this so green gray yellow well kind of yellow colors, grayish, blue, green, and sorry for the moire effect. Um, maybe it's not really good on the camera, but I will put a photo of this book um, in the video too, so you can see it without the, well, mesmerizing effect of the moire. And I found out that it was really great to work on black pages. Maybe this one has a moray effect as well, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Use the template and just a little patterns. Here you can see that I worked 
on one image overlapping two pages already uh, also for a middle page so it's on two pages kind of landscape things and this is just paper that i used for a workshop so it's some pieces are rest material, zero waste. Some things aren't. These are, I think, book pages. Or this is two pages glued together. Also no book page, I think. And this is just from a magazine. I loved these, these clouds. And if you look at the other page, there's also Dutch text in it. So I saw a face in it and I thought it was really matching this, well, wintry picture with a woman with the scarves in the wind. And here I used the burlap again. So, yeah, this is my very first real bookbinding project. So now you have seen my progress from an eight-year-old child to right now. And I think in the future there will be more to come. So I will definitely keep you updated. I hope you share with me your inspiration and your projects. And what kind of book do you work on? Do you have a theme for it? Which kind of pages are your favorite ones to use? And did you stumble upon some challenges? Please let me know and we can discuss that in one of our next videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please give it a thumbs up, turn on a notification bell if you haven't already and subscribe and leave something in the comments and I see you next time. Bye bye.